Praise the Lord, young people. It's Brother Torrance coming to you. Glad to see you back. Going, getting the word. Um, just wanted to come to you and um, open up and read the prayer before we start the word. Um, before you do anything, please grab your Bibles. All right, let us pray. Dear Holy most gracious Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we come to you again. Thank you for this day. Thank you for this opportunity to bring the word. And thank you for the opportunity to bring it through um, the social media thing that we're using. The Heavenly Father, thank you for being able to put in YouTube and use the iMover to put together the message, Lord. I ask that you continue to undertake for the kids, undertake for the young people, undertake for those that are in authority over them, the Heavenly Father, give them wisdom and encouragement and strength, Lord, to continue to push forward. Undertake for the young people as we finish out the school year, the Heavenly Father, everything be done decent oil. Prepare for the summer and um, continue to undertake for safety and protection and health, the Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we pray and give thanks. Amen. Enjoy the word. Welcome back to another Saturday night Bible class. My name is Sister Liz. I will be going over the books of the Bible. But first, let's get started with reciting the books of the Bible. We know some books of books of the Bible. We know some books of books of the Bible. We know some books of books of the Bible. These are some books that we really know. Old Testament. Genesis. 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 Exodus. Exodus. Leviticus. 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 Numbers. Numbers. Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy. Joshua. Joshua. Judges. Judges. Ruth. Ruth. First Samuel. First Samuel. Second Samuel. Second Samuel. Second Samuel. First King. First King. Second King. Second King. First Chronicles. First Chronicles. Second Chronicles. Second Chronicles. Ezra. Ezra. Nehemiah. Nehemiah. Esther. Esther. Job. Job. Psalm. Psalm. Proverbs. Proverbs. Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes. Sons of Solomon. Sons of Solomon. Isaiah, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Jeremiah, Lamentation, Lamentation, Ezekiel, Ezekiel, Daniel, Daniel, Hosea, Hosea, Joel, Joel, Amos, Amos, Obadiah, Obadiah, Jonah, Jonah, Micah, Micah, Nahum, Nahum, Habakkuk, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Zephaniah, Haggai, Haggai. Zachariah. Zachariah. Malachi. Malachi. Alright, let's get started. This week's book is 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel is the ninth book in the New Testament, and it is the fourth book in the division of history. The book of Samuel was written by Samuel, Nathan, and Gad. It was written around 900 BC and it covers the time period of 1150 BC to 1000 BC. 1 Samuel is very well known for its story of David killing Goliath. Let's look at other famous stories in 1 Samuel. First story is Samuel's mother gives him to the priest to be raised. Second, Samuel hears God's voice as a boy. Third, Samuel anoints David as future king. David kills Goliath. And Saul calls on a witch to bring the prophet Samuel back to life and to speak to him. Let's look at some of the famous verses found in 1 Samuel. The first one comes from 1 Samuel 16, 17, and it reads, But the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not on his countenance or on the height of his stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord seeth not as man seeth, for man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. Second scripture comes from 1 Samuel 15, 22, and it reads, And Samuel said, Hath the Lord as a great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices, as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to hearken than the fat of rams. Now let's take a look at some of the important points about the book. The first point is, First Samuel contains the stories of Samuel the prophet, King Saul, and King David's trials before he was king. 
Prior to Saul to Samuel, the people of Israel had been in tribes, held loosely together. But God transformed them into one unified nation under one form of government in this part of their history. First Samuel focuses on the establishment of Israel as a nation. The third point, people demanded a king because all the surrounding nations had one and they were given into peer pressure. And last point, the first king was Saul and the second king was David. This book covers mostly the prophet Samuel growing up, King Saul's good in bad adventure, and his chasing down David to try to kill him. The book ends with the death of Saul. Praise the Lord, young people. I am Sister Citra, and tonight I'll be bringing to you the memory verse portion of our lesson. Before we get started, let's pray. Dear Lord, we come before you thanking you, Lord, for tonight and for the young people and everyone that are tuning in. Lord, we ask that you just undertake and hide the teachers behind the cross that we bring forth your word, Lord. And we thank you for all that you're going to do. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. All right. <clears throat> tonight, we're going to be coming, uh, bringing to you the memory verse tonight, and that'll be coming from Ephesians chapter 6, verse 1. So everyone get your Bibles. All right. We're going to read it from God's word first, and then we're going to drill. All right. And it is Ephesians chapter 6, verse 1. And it says, children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. All right, amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, again, that is Ephesians chapter 6, verse 1. What we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and drill that verse with you. Um, we're going to go ahead and go through that. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 1. All right. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. All right. Now, I know uh, if you have to look down, if you have to look at your work, go ahead and do that real quick and hold that up. We're going to go with you. Ephesians chapter six, verse one. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. All right. I'm going to let you do one more time with your Bibles. Ephesians chapter six, verse one. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. All right. Now we're going to put the Bible down. And we're going to, I'm not going to actually close it, but I'm going to actually put your hand over it. So Ephesians chapter 6, verse 1. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, we hope that. Uh, you all take God's word, even from the from the memory verses that we give you each and every week uh, and the books of the Bible uh, that you move to high God's word in your heart. Uh, it is so important that we do that because each and every day you guys are faced with challenges as I am faced with challenges. And we certainly need that word of God to sustain us. All right. All right. We thank you for tuning in and joining us tonight. Uh, we want you all to prepare yourselves, Brother Colian, as he brings to you tonight's lesson, Abraham's Faith. Praise the Lord, boys and girls. Uh, this is Brother Colian coming to you with the second part of our lesson from last week, which was about Abraham's faith. Um, we know that Isaac has been born, so we move up to chapter uh, 22, and the uh, story comes from verses 1 through 19. I'm not going to read them all. But if you need to read them, please go ahead and do so so that you kind of understand uh, what's going on there. So I just want to open in prayer. Heavenly Father, come to you just giving you thanks, Lord. I ask that you would forgive us of our sins, cleanse our hearts of all unrighteousness as we get into your word and learn how you use Abraham to Heavenly Father and how you uh, showed him what faith is about and how he had faith in you to Heavenly Father. May we have that same faith and may we learn from the word how we can have that same faith. So we just ask that you will uh, give us wisdom, have me behind the cross, show me what to say, 
And I ask that it will be clear to everyone's understanding. In Jesus' name, amen. I am going to start by reading verse um, 1 of, chapter, of Genesis chapter 22. And it says, And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, here am I. And the word tempt there in verse 1 is test. So God is about to give Abraham a big test. And let's see how Abraham handles it. Verse 2, And he said, Take now thy son, thine only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I will tell thee of. So Abraham has been told to take his son, who was <laughs> given to he and his wife in old age, as, as the Lord promised. Now the Lord is telling him, uh, God is telling him to take that one son that I gave you and take him to be offered as a burnt offering. Now think about what could be going through um, Abraham's mind at this point. Like what? Like after all this, you want me to offer him up as a burnt offering? So let's see what Abraham's response is, you know, and just be thinking about how you would respond when God gives you certain tests. And let's just pay attention to how Abraham responds. Verse three, and Abraham rose up early in the morning and saddled his ass and took two of his young men with him and Isaac his son and clave the wood for the burnt offering and rose up and went unto the place which God had told him. So Abraham didn't fuss. He didn't complain. I'm sure he may have thought, wow, but you know, he said, this is what God told me to do. So I'm going to do it. So he's followed the instructions again, put yourself in that situation. What am I going to do if God told me to do something like this? Am I going to murmur? Am I going to complain? But what we see from the word is when God gave the instruction, Abraham followed right through and did exactly what God asked him to do. I don't know if that would have been me. I might have been, wait a minute, God, well, why do you want to do that? We probably would have had some questions, right? So Abraham takes the journey. He's heading to where God told him to go uh, about three days and he gets to where he's going. Um... Verse 6 says, Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac, his son, and he took the fire in his hand and a knife, and they went both of them together. And Isaac spake unto Abraham, this is verse 7, and, and Isaac spake unto Abraham, his father, and said, My father, and he said, Here am I, my son. And he said, Behold, the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? Isaac has no idea that he's to be the offering here. He doesn't even know that. But listen to what Abraham said. He said, and verse 8 says, And Abraham said, My son God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went both of them together. Now, the um, verse 9 talks about how they got to the place where they were going. Um, and Abraham has now grabbed Isaac and prepared to offer him up on the altar as an offering. Verse 10, and Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. And as soon as he did this, he stretched his hand and he's about to do as God told him to do. Verse 12, excuse me, verse 11. And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. Abraham responded, he said, and he, and he said, here am I. Verse 12, and he said, lay not thine hand upon the lad, neither do, do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God, seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thine, thy son, thine only son from me. So wait a minute, what do you mean, God? Now you know, you know everything. Well, the purpose here was for Abraham to know well, what he's willing to do for God the Father, that he's willing to do exactly as he's been instructed. So it wasn't necessarily for God to know, but more for Abraham to know. When we find ourselves in situations like this, it's not about God knowing what we would do. It's about us knowing what, what we would do. So when he tests us, it's for us. It's for us seeing, well, do we line up? Are we willing to do exactly as God has commanded us? So that's what that testing is about. Now, Abraham has done what the Lord asked him to do. He was going to sacrifice his son as he was told. He's has strong faith in God and he has strong respect that he's going to do what God told him to do. Because of this, blessings come his way. So down to verse 15. And the angel of the Lord called unto Abraham out of heaven the second time and said, By myself have I sworn, saith the Lord, for because thou hast done this thing and hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, that in blessing I will bless thee, and in multiplying I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven and as the sand which is upon the seashore, 
and thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies. Verse 18 says, and in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed because thou hast obeyed my voice. So Abraham returned unto his young men and they rose up and went together to Beersheba and Abraham dwelt at Beersheba. So after Abraham follows through, does what God has asked him to do, shows his faith. He was tested when he passed the test. God then turns around and says, because you have done this thing that I've asked you to do, because you've been faithful to me and shown that you will be, now I'm going to bless you. That's what I want us to see as children of God. Sometimes it's not hard. Sometimes it's not easy. But if we would trust God, if we pass some of the tests and challenges that are put in front of us, there are blessings that are waiting from us that the Lord wants to bestow upon us because he loves us. So let's make it our goal to do as God has instructed. Amen. Amen. All right. As we continue, um, I want to talk about something very, very important. Um, we have so much going on in our world right now. And uh, we just uh, had a message of uh, people who are listening to what Jesus has to say, who are sitting at his feet. Um, you know, uh, his disciples, his children, people who know him and people who are getting to know him and hopefully saying yes to Jesus Christ. Um, but what if you haven't said yes to Jesus Christ yet? How do you establish a personal relationship with him? How do you know that when you leave this earth that you're going to go to heaven? Um, there's so many people afraid right now because of this pandemic that we have going on. Um, school has been canceled. Businesses are closed. People are stuck in their houses and uh, everybody's panicking. And uh, some, well, some people are panicking, not everybody, but some people are panicking because they're like, what's going on? You know, like, what do I do next? And they're afraid. But for the believer, um, these should be exciting times for us because I believe that God has once again slowed everything down so that we can all get our focus back on him. And this is also an opportunity for us to tell people about Jesus and how they can get to know him. So we'll talk about the way to heaven. Okay. Why did God give his son? It's because he loved the world so much. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Jesus, be, Jesus came to the world. The word became flesh. He lived. He died. And he did that for us so that we could be saved. That's why he gave his son. He loved us so much. He didn't want us to die and go to hell. He wanted us to be with him. So then you may ask, well, well why do I need Jesus? What is my need for Jesus? Why do I need him? We need Jesus because we have sinned. I have sinned. Sometimes we sin by getting into fights. So many other things that we do. We disobey our parents. Um, um, our sin brings sadness. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, uh, Romans uh, 3.23 says. That's why we need Jesus, because we have sinned. Sin separates us from the love of God. There's a penalty for sin. If we don't accept Jesus, there's a penalty for sin. Sin must be punished. Read this line right here. Sin must be punished. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. That's found in Revelations 20.15. And it says again, for the wages of sin is death, but, and thank God for this word, but right here, B-U-T, but <laughs> the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Romans 6, 23 is where that scripture is found. Okay. So what did Jesus do for you? What did Jesus do for me? He was punished in my place. He was punished in your place. Okay. He is not still dead. He is alive and he's in heaven. He took the punishment for our sins. 1 Corinthians 15, 3-4, part of for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Okay? So what do I need to do? How do I accept this gift? How do I become a member of God's family? How does my name get written in the Lamb's Book of Life? How do I know that when he returns, I will be with him? OK, for again, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. He gives us a gift. The gift of God is to receive Jesus Christ, to accept salvation from Jesus Christ. That is how we establish it. That's how that is how we establish a relationship with Jesus Christ. 
But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. That is found in John chapter 1, verse 12. Okay? So we must receive God's gift. Do you want to receive God's gift today? Do you want to receive his gift? For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved, says Romans 10, 13. So there's a prayer that we need to pray if we want to be in the family of God. It's a very simple prayer that if we pray it and we mean it, we immediately be born into the family of God. And that prayer reads, and if you want to just pray it right now, you can bow your head, close your eyes right where you are, and just say this prayer right along with me. You can say, Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. I'm sorry for my sins. I believe that you died on the cross to pay for my sins and rose from the dead. Please come into my heart today. Come into my heart and life and save me. Help me to live for your glory. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, what you need to do now is uh, reach out to... You have just been born into the family of God, first of all. And now what you need to do is reach out to um, you know, your, your spiritual leaders here at the Abundant Life Bible Mission. Uh, the leadership in this group, um, you know, you can reach out now and we'll tell you how to become a disciple, how to build that relationship with Jesus Christ and continue to grow in his faith and grow in his love. And next thing you know, you'll be telling your friends about Jesus. You'll be telling other people how they can be saved and how they can have a relationship with God. And that is the most important thing, especially during these times right now. We don't know when the Lord is going to return. But a lot of biblical prophecy is being fulfilled right now with everything that's going on. It is being fulfilled and the Lord is coming back soon to take us where? To take us to heaven. So what you just learned was how to get there. And the way to get to heaven is through Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for again for this time. Thank you for this class. Thank you for this message. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for the opportunity to still um, get online and share with the children. We ask that you to keep them engaged, keep them focused, help them to build upon what you've started teaching them, help them to draw closer and closer to you. In Jesus' name we pray and give thanks. Amen.